Hello everyone. Welcome to today's class. Before we look at the topic of today's, I just want to have a brief recap of what we studied the last time. We looked at indices, um, using the laws of indices to solve initial equations. So today we are going to look at logarithm and as well applying the laws of logarithm to solving questions. So we have our examples and here are the laws of logarithm. Look at the solution to the examples. Now the first thing that we have to do is to change this to initial form. If you change the numerator, the numerator is going to be 82.41 times 76.62 raised to the power of half over 7.387 now note that this is numerator and this is denominator so we are going to put them in tabular forms we have the number and the log and so what you do is arrange your numerator And you have this as numerator. Then you come down, you fix in your denominator. So what is the first thing to do? Is that before you begin to obtain the log of any number, you have to obtain their characteristics first. So the characteristics of 82.1 would be 1 plus. And anytime you have multiplication, according to the law, it becomes addition. So this will be plus. And again, the characteristics of 76.62 is one point. Now, the characteristics of the denominator will be zero point. Now, I decided to obtain the characteristics first, then before going ahead to obtain the logarithm of the numbers. Now, if we take the logarithm of the numbers, it means you have to go to your logarithm table, like what I have in my head, you go to logarithm 82 under column 4, difference 1. Okay, so we go to our logarithm table, like I have in my hand, right? We have 82.41, so I'm taking the first number. Then you go to where you have 82, this is 82. Then you move it over to the fourth column, this is 4. So you have 82 under 4, that will give me 9159. Right, and the next number we have there is one, and so we move over to difference one on that same row, it becomes one. So, what we do is you take that figure 9159, which is a 200 column four, then the difference is one. Then you add, if you add, this is going to be 10, so you carry one over one plus five is six, this is one, and that is nine. Now, remember that these values that you have are decimal. And this will become 1.9160. Okay, the same thing applies to the second number. So we add, if we add 0 plus 3 will be 3, 6 plus 4 is 10. So you put down 0, you take 1 over. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 8 is 10. You put down 0 again and you carry 1 over. So 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18. So you take, put down 8, and we'll take 1 over. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 1 again gives us 3. Now, this is not the final stage of the numerator. Remember that in the question, the numerator has an exponent half. Anytime you have a fraction as the exponent, what you do is that you divide. You divide this by 2. And if you do that, for ease of calculation, you can just quickly use your calculator to do that. And that will give us 1.9002 approximately. Now, if you come over to the denominator, there is nothing to add or subtract. So the answer becomes 0 0.8685. Now, what I like to do most of the time in obtaining the logarithm of the overall in the question is to take another different table for neatness sake. 
And in my table, I will have this as uh, the numerator, which is divided by the denominator, as stated in the question. So my numerator is 1.9002. Again, if you have a division, according to the law, when you have division, it becomes minus. So this becomes minus, and the denominator gives me 0 0.8688. Five. So at this point, we'll, we'll start subtracting. Two cannot, so we have to borrow all the way from nine. So this side is going to be ten. You borrow one from here to here, it's going to give us ten. If you borrow one from there again, this is going to give us twelve. Now remember, so all of these numbers will be left to nine, nine. So here is twelve, and this will be twelve minus five will give us seven. Now we have nine left. 9 minus 8 will give us 1. We also have 9 left. This will give us 3. Right? We borrowed from this man. So this man will turn 8. And 8 minus 8 is going to be 0. 1 minus 0 gives us 1. Now, at this point, what do we do? We have to use our logarithm table again to obtain our anti-log. Okay, recall that whenever you want to obtain the antilog, you make use of the matrix. And remember, for every logarithm of a number, you have the, the characteristics and you have the matrix. So we are going to use the matrix. And what is the matrix here? The matrix is the decimal point where you have the 0 0.0317. And so if we go to our antilog, we would go to the column where we have 0 0.03. Now we are checking at point zero 0.03. So this is point zero 0.03. I hope you all can see it. Now the next number there after point zero 0.03 is 1. So we move over to column 1. And point zero 0.03 under column 1 gives us 1074. Okay. Alright. 1074. So the next number is 7. Then we move over to different 7. On that same row where you have 0 0.03, takes you to 7, and this is 7, right? And that is 2. So what do we do next is that we take those numbers. So we add. That will be 1074. Now remember that our difference is 2. So you add that, and that will give you 6701. Now, all of these values that is obtained are still in a decimal form. And so here is going to be 0 0.1076. Now, for us to obtain the exact number, what do we do? We add 1 to the characteristics. And this is it. And this must be done all the time. So if you add 1 to the characteristics, that gives us 2. Now, the value 2 simply suggests to us that the decimal will move towards the right direction in two places. And so this will be 1, 2. And therefore, our final answer is 10.76. So we're going to look at solution to example 2. In example 2, we have this as 85.32 over 9.82 all squared. Now, if I'm going to break this into the numerator and denominator, it's going to be 85.32 squared, and the denominator will be 9.82 squared. Now, this is what we are going to arrange in our logarithm table. So, we tabulate, or tabulate it, I beg your pardon, and so this will give you. 85.32 square. That is a numerator. Then we have 9.82. And this is the denominator. Now remember, if you are going to obtain the logarithm of a number, you must first obtain the characteristics. So if I take the characteristics of this man, is one point. And the characteristics of the denominator is zero point. Here, I don't have any division, any addition or subtraction to make. I just only have single numbers of both the numerator and the denominator. So at this point, I'm going to use my log table 
to find the decimal part. Okay, so these are the values of the logarithm of the numbers we have. Now, it cannot be the overall yet. That is why the answer is still left open. Why is that? Because for both the numerator and the denominator, we have exponent 2. Now, if you look at the exponent, the exponent is, is um, a whole number. And so for that reason, what are we going to do? We are going to multiply the logarithm of that number times that exponent, which is 2. And the same thing applies to the denominator. So if we do that, that will give us 1.9310 times 2. And we have this as 3.8. 620. The denominator is 0.9921 times 2. And this gives us 1.9842. And as is usually my style, I will have to prepare another table for neatness sake. So I have this as my numerator divided by my denominator. So if you do that, my numerator is 3.8620. Division signifies minus. Then denominator is 1.9842. So we subtract again. Zero cannot, so I will have to borrow one from here. If I borrow one from here, this will remain one, and this will give me 10. So 10 minus 2 will be 8. I have one left. One cannot subtract 4. So I have to borrow one from Mr. 6, and this will be 5. If I add it to 1, it's going to be 11. 11 minus 4 will give me 7. Now, 5 cannot subtract 8, so I will have to borrow one from Mr. 8. If I do that, this will be 7, and this will give me 15. 15 minus 8 will be 7. Now, 7 cannot subtract 9, so I will have to borrow one from Mr. 3, and that will be 2. If I add that to 7, that would give me 17, and 17 minus 9 would give me 8. Now, 2 can subtract 1, so 2 minus 1 would give me 1. At this point, we are going to use the mantissa to obtain the antilog. Alright, so the antilog of the mantissa gives us 0 0.7548. Now, remember what I said in the Last example, I said you must always add one to the characteristics to obtain the number. So if you do that, again, that will give us two. So that signifies that our decimal is going to move to the right in two places. So we have this as one and two. And so therefore, that gives us 75.48 as our answer. If you have any questions, you can send them to my private chat and I will do justice to them. God bless you.